That's a nice little lock. Told you we're still getting breeding deep, deep into the 2023 season here. What's up, Snake fans? Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily. And we're going into the snake room today and we're gonna see some cool, cool ball pythons, boas. You never know what we might take a look at today. It's a Tuesday here and you know, you never know what might happen. I uh, had a long weekend, obviously, with Labor Day. We got a lot of good supplies in on uh, Tuesday here. We got uh, hot spots, we got a heat tape, we got our delivery from Vision. So we're gonna be setting up some really, really cool two foot, and we're gonna set up all the three foots we got, enclosures. Uh, we're gonna put some naturalistic settings in there. We're gonna put our cocoa blocks in there. It's gonna be really cool. So this, this coming week, you're gonna see some really cool cages set up. We also have, I think, some eggs gonna be hatching at the end of the week, which is really cool. We set up uh, some boas that we had uh, a litter of two weeks ago. They were still in the incubator. They just shut out. So a lot going on. Let's go into the snake room, take a look. That's a nice little lock. Told you we're still getting breeding deep, deep into the 2023 season here. But it's a banana black pastel pied that's being bred to a black pastel pied. A really nice black pastel pied at that. Almost looks like a panda pied, but it's not. Not that I know. We're going to try to prove that out. We uh, have produced in the past from a different black pastel pied to this girl, we produced uh, purple panda pieds, which is a banana super black pastel pied. The panda pied, which is very desirable, is a super black pastel pied. And we produce some really nice ones with that. But that's a nice lock right there. So We're going to be getting eggs deep into the year. I'm telling you, November, December, we're going to still be seeing eggs on the ground. See, these girls are still hugging water bowls, submerging themselves in water here. This is a beautiful yellow belly pied. She's, uh, she's probably ovulating now. We're close to ovulation. It's just, it's incredible that the, how late the season is going. It's just, everything's breeding right now. And it's not for next year. This is still from 2022, just a really, really late season we're having. There's our really cool Annery Palmetto Corn Snake male. We moved into a much bigger enclosure since he started out in a little teeny hatchling rack. He's moved up and he's looking really nice. He's got some really cool speckling on him. This, you know, I don't, I don't know if corn snakes would actually be good display snakes or not, but I definitely would love to put him in like some kind of a display enclosure. He's so beautiful, beautiful. What a beautiful looking snake. I think corn snakes have some of the. It's funny because corn snakes are so like common that people don't even kind of dismiss them, but they're probably the, some of the nicest colored snakes that we have in, in all of snake breeding. Here's our female, Palmetto, that's uh, possibly had anery, possibly had uh, albino, and possibly had charcoal, actually. We'll breed her to that male at some point in the future. They don't like to hang around too much, they're a little skittish, but she's beautiful too in her own right. He's got more, it's funny, he's anery, and he's got more oranges and reds in him, in him than she does. She looks like the anery. Here's our hypo blood red male, corn snake. He's gonna be doing some breeding this year. Hopefully some of our females. And beautiful albino, a lot of reds in them. Like I said, if we ever had these colors and like boas, we, I guess we have reds and boas like this, but imagine a ball python with that red, you got it, it would be worth a million dollars. And there's our female we're gonna breed him to. Also gorgeous little Albino, blood red, to Sarah Corn Snake. Look at that. Super, super pretty. What's up, big girl? Big female black dragon. Water monitor. Let's see if we can get her to play nice with us. 
No, no tails. No tails, come on. You wanna go into your dirty water? Oh, that's not nice. Not nice. Did Papo clean that? You probably didn't, you probably made it all messy already. I'll clean it again for you if you wanna come out and play. What's up, big girl? I'm sure Pablo fed you today. You wanna come say hi? I was just talking to my uh, good friend about quarter monitor training. And we were saying how sometimes they're just not in a good mood. And it has nothing to do with anything you might've done wrong or right. They're just not in a good mood. They don't want to come out. Sometimes they want to come out. Usually when I open her, her tub up, she just wants to spring out. Now I am mean, sticking up the camera in her face, which might be making her nervous. So that's why I'm, I'm backing away a little bit. And I'm going to see if she comes up to the entrance of the cage. And I'll see if I can pet her a little bit. Once we built it, once we built her, her big enclosure, she's going to be much happier. I know she is. All right. You want to stay in the water bowl? Stay in that dirty water bowl. <laughs> it's better off not even. It's the, you know it is the end of the day. These these guys go to sleep around four or five o'clock. They don't want to be bothered. Anymore. <laughs> look at my look at my rhino rat snake. Look at that. What a cutie. Right there, just peeking out. Obviously wrapped around the top of the cage. And she's just sticking her head out, saying, hey, what's going on? What's going on here? Should we spray a little water for you guys? Or for you, if you're alone in here. Get a little mist. Just try to mist her cage every day. Sometimes twice a day, because it's really dry in my snake room. And they seem to like it. I'll drink from the little dew drops, so the little water droplets. <laughs> So I know they like it. All right, Sanzinia, one shed. I'm shocked it's under the hide box. Wow, I never see the Sanzinia under the hide box. And this little boy, he didn't shed, but he's getting too big for this this tub. We're gonna have to put him in a bigger tub. Can't wait. We'll move him to some of those arboreal enclosures. I don't know, they might sit on the ground though. They might not even, uh, they might not even utilize the, the hide, or I should say the uh, arboreal aspect of it. Let's see, is it under here? Oh, yeah, it is. I don't think it just ate either. It's just chilling out. Very rarely do you see it over there, but it must wanna warm itself up a little. All right, there's my snow splash Kenyan Samboa. Obviously a snow is an albino annery and then it has that splash gene in it which some people think is a pie gene and very rarely these they're usually buried so my little girl is uh just chilling out it's the first time she's actually let me take her out and not really try to get away so that's kind of cool just bring a little light here they're so cool these guys i can't wait till they get a little bigger i'm still missing my mail my mail escaped she goes into this, digging into this substrate. They like it really dry. So we keep it really dry in here. And this this is coconut core. It's like just ground coconut. They really seem to like it. I was using sand, Reptisand, sand, but this coconut core is really good. It, it makes it easier for them to make tunnels because the sand kind of collapses on the tunnel. This will, she probably has all kinds of like interesting little tunnels underneath here. I don't know if we can see it through the side, but. Anyway, she's doing good. Hopefully we'll find our male. Here's my leucistic wolf snake. Hopefully we'll get him to eat again this week by tricking him, giving him a, putting a little frog scent on our pinky like we did last week. And hopefully we'll get him to eat a few, uh, few pinkies. Beautiful. Can't wait till he gets bigger. Now I'm in hunt, now I'm in search for a female. He's so unique looking, you know. How many people have a leucistic wolf snake? It's kind of cool. 
I got him on the coconut core too, but I, his his is much wetter. I dampened it because he likes more. They like moisture, and that's the advantage. You can keep them dry. Or you can keep them wet. All right, here's one of my most extreme hypo enchi. It might not even be enchi to be honest with you. It's definitely hypo super hurricane at rainbow males we produced this year. And he's super extreme in the sense that the hurricane pattern is just outrageous. I've already, actually already sold two of these just off videos um, because people just wanted this insane, insane pattern. Imagine this in rainbow. Wow. I don't think this is, I don't think there's any Enchi in here. I think that's why it's so extreme. I think Enchi kind of unwa unravels a little bit of the hurricane, but I'm not sure. So I'm calling it possible Enchi. It's, it's definite hypo. So we got, and then it's a hundred percent head, head rainbow too. So really beautiful mill. And there's our hurricane version of that. Um, this one I believe has Enchi in it. Enchi, super hurricane, hypo, rainbow. You can see the insane looking purples in here. That's just off the charts. Uh, this is a male too. So this one I believe is sold. So, although it's, no, it's not sold yet because the guy hasn't given me a deposit. I sent him an invoice. He has not sent a deposit. So if anyone is interested, he might still be available. <laughs> this is, this is going to be a little bit more expensive than the other one you saw because he has a visual rainbow and, uh, Someone told me the other day, they're like, Dave, you're the rainbow guy. <laughs> or one of the rainbow guys, at least. Because I've been I've been producing some really nice ones. We have gotten zero birth defects on these rainbows. Everything is outcrossed from the original rainbow I got, and that probably is what did it. And I don't think... The, the hurricane gene just looks outrageously nice. Especially in the super form. All right, there's a uh, possible super caramel carpet python but it's also 66 percent het moon glow so it's that means it's 66 percent het albino and 66 percent het azanthic and if it was super caramel which is what i'm hoping for on this little girl i'll probably wind up keeping this trying to prove her out um beautiful beautiful i think she might be my first super caramel i ever produced to be honest with you let's see if we can get her out of here a little bit without getting bit she just has some wild pattern on her. She's a really good eater. She's always been a good eater. She's pretty mellow too. She's not, she's not too snappy. Are you little girl? Look at that pattern. That's super, that's gotta be super caramel. It's just too crazy not to be. All right, here's my um, newly acquired albino, T negative albino that is, blood python. Beautiful little boy. I'm going to be putting him into uh, his tub that now has some cocoa blocks in it, which is much nicer than the paper towels we had down there. Uh, keep moisture better. And these blood pythons like moisture, so you have to give them a little bit more moisture than you would say like a ball python. They really crave it. They do better on it. They stay hydrated. Beautiful, beautiful little boy. I'll show you his sister in a second. Ooh, doesn't like the camera in his face. All right, let's move on. And there's our little female that is beautiful as well. She's possibly Matrix too, from what I'm told. And we're gonna put her in our little tub in a second. All right, so we got our little girl. She's in her Coco Box enclosure now, nice and fun. We're going to spray this down, get it a little more moist, and we're going to leave her, and she's going to do pretty well in here. She ate really nice. Both of them ate last week, and we'll be feeding them again tomorrow. So, whoa, that was a quickie. I got to handle these guys a little more. Beautiful, beautiful mistakes. And we'll finish up today with our Super Fire Diamond Boas, and in their little naturalistic enclosure. They're really, as you can see, putting on size very nicely here. Um, super snow white color. She's coming to me, she's, she's hungry. And there's the other one, climbing on the branches. We love to see that, and that little naturalistic 
behavior. And these are, you know, the, the for those of you who don't know, the dia, the fire diamonds, even in the super form, this is a boa amarali um, locality. That's where the fire diamond came from out of the amaralis. Now they've been mixed with a lot of different stuff since then. But if you look, all the fire diamonds have that same amaralli long, longish head. Actually, this one actually has it much better much more pronounced than the other one does. The other one's snout is a little shorter. This one's got the long snout like the Amaralis have. And this one's a little shorter snout, probably because of what they breed it to. And this is possibly Motley and Hypo too, so there's other genes mixed in. This is just not pure fire diamond. They're doing great. They love their naturalistic enclosure. We're gonna change their water bowl now and uh, we're gonna let them get some sleep. <laughs> All right, guys, that's going to do it for today here at Palumbo's Pythons and Boas. Hope you enjoyed today's video. It was a quickie, but, uh, you know, the week was backed up because of Labor Day, so a lot going on. I have a lot of stuff uh, I had to send out. We sent out some nice orders today to a couple customers, and I should be possibly receiving something if I pull the trigger on it. I don't know if I want to do it, and I don't know if I want to reveal it yet, so I'm still thinking about it. I might be receiving something by the end of the week and that's going to be really cool i also want to uh head over to my friend ty parks in iguana land again and uh do some more video of taking i don't know if we're going to get there this week it might be next week that we get over there but uh he, i have an open invitation so that's always fun as well and uh once again you never know what might be hatching and what might be uh we're still waiting for clutches we got a lot of pole python clutches still coming and i have to list a lot of stuff so Hopefully over the next week or two on Morph Market, you'll start seeing a lot of my stuff from not only from 2023, but from 2022 stuff I never even listed. High end, really cool stuff. Keep a lookout for that. And uh, you know what to do. If you like what you see and hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications, hit that like button. I'll see you back tomorrow morning.